Welcome, everyone. I'm Jean Floten, Chancellor of WGU Washington, and the first thing I'd like to ask you to do is please take your seats. Please join me in offering special thanks to the incredibly talented Miss Valerie Lopez for singing the Star Spangled Banner for us. Let's also thank the Tessitura String Trio for the pomp and circumstance that guided us in. I must say, this is one of the most splendid sights I've ever seen. If anybody's especially happy to be here today, could you indicate that by giving me an owl hoot? <laughs> I love that, but I didn't hear you. Can all right, all right. That sounded much, much better. <laughs> I didn't hear that. Maybe I'm glad I didn't. But honored graduates, guests, mentors, family, and friends, it is my sincerest honor to convene the 2013 WGU Washington Commencement Ceremony. As I said, this is a moment to cherish. I extend heartfelt congratulations from the whole university community to you, our graduates, this afternoon. We are so very, very proud of your accomplishments. And we have many people who have joined us today to honor you graduates. I'd like to introduce, first of all, some special guests. Uh, we have Representative Marcy Maxwell, who should be, there she is, she's on the second floor. Unjun Lee, um, who is here from the governor's office. Unjun, thank you for being here. And Dr. Jean Hernandez, who is president of Edmonds Community College and one of our partners. We're very, very delighted to have you here. The people who are on the stage to be part of your celebration this evening are first of all WGU's provost from our national office, Dr. David Leisure. Please stand, David. I want all of you to stand as I introduce you. This afternoon's commencement speaker, the Honorable Cyrus Habib, who is a Washington State representative from the 48th District. He's a Perkins Coie associate and distinguished lawmaker in residence at the Seattle University School of Law. Next to him is Dr. Samuel H. Smith, who's President Emeritus of Washington State University and the member of WGU. Sam, stand. Oh, he did. I, I'm sorry, I missed his standing. But he's also a member of the WGU Washington Advisory Board. Next to him is Rogelio Rijojas, who's member of also the WGU Washington Advisory Board, and he's CEO of CMAR Community Health Centers. I'm proud to also introduce Dr. Rich Cummins, who is on our advisory board and he's pr president of Columbia Basin College. And graduates, we have some very special speakers for you this evening. Kathy Johnston, Julius Griron, pardon me, and Connie Summers. Let's give these people a huge round of applause. <laughs> Behind them is a very special group of people. With the WGU Washington mentors and any other employees who are here from WGU, please stand. That's you all. <laughs> <laughs> I must say that not a day goes by at WG Washington that I don't hear from one of you graduates. This, these people have made a huge difference in your lives. They've served as your advocates, guides, facilitators, and life coaches. Again, let's give these people who have been totally dedicated to your success the appreciation they deserve.
And graduates, I know for most of you, making the decision to come back to school was a huge family decision. And you probably couldn't have completed your degree without the support of your family and loved ones. In fact, you brought an average of eight people with you this afternoon to celebrate with you. So would all the family, friends, loved ones please stand so we can give you the appreciation you so richly deserve. This year, WGU Washington celebrates its second commencement. Not only have we grown to the size of the Evergreen State College in Washington in two years, with an enrollment of over 4,400 full-time students, but we reached a very important milestone when Governor Jay Inslee signed Senate Bill 5195 just this past Wednesday that extended to WGU Washington students who need tuition assistant, assistance, the opportunity to apply for the state need grant program. Thank you, it was a big deal. I want to thank all of you here and all other WG Washington students for stepping forward. This bill will have lasting impact and help future generations of WGU Washington students to complete their degrees. We are certainly indebted to a number of heroes in the legislature that advocated on our behalf, as well as our advisory board members. Marcy Maxwell is here, Cyrus Abib, who were terrific supporters who helped us, and we owe a huge debt of gratitude to the Washington State Legislature. So, Our bill signing and commencement all in one week, what a perfect week it has been for WGU Washington. Now I want to talk about you, our graduates. You have shown yourself to be very dedicated students with high persistence in graduation rates. Over 540 of you graduated from WGU Washington this year as teachers, nurses, business, healthcare, and IT professionals. 347 of you are graduating with bachelor's degrees and almost 200 with master's degrees. 34% of you are business grads, 32% of you are education grads, 24% healthcare, and 9% information technology. Forgive me for this, but your average age is 39. Mine too. I've been 39 for the last, I won't tell you how many years. The youngest among you is 20 years old, and the oldest among you is 65. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. Your average time to degree was 21 months, which is substantially less time than the average um, for any other online university. And at WGU National, it is 35 months. National for other institutions is about 60 months. I think that says loads about your dedication um, and how you were able to progress through our competency-based model on your time with your flexibility, and you really knocked it out of the ballpark. It's been incredible. Thank you, yes. We all know that Washingtonians are simply high achievers, and uh, 174 of you amazing high achievers are here today to celebrate your commencement. And your graduation is certainly our crowning glory. Congratulations to all of you. <laughs> One of the things that we're able to do at commencement is to honor people that have been special partners in our journey. And this afternoon, I want to recognize one of these individuals. This individual has enjoyed a very distinguished career in higher education. He is well known, highly respected as an educator, 
in Washington, having served 15 years as president of Washington State University. I think he knows who he is about this moment. He has served on many prestigious boards and commissions and has way too many accomplishments and accolades to recognize, even if I had all afternoon to do that. We want to join all those that have gone before us in recognizing his stellar work for helping students. Dr. Sam Smith was one of the initial pioneers in online learning who understood very early the power of the internet to transform learning. We're honoring him this afternoon for his national leadership as a member of the Board of Trustees of Western Governors University, where he was a founding member, and as a founding member of the advisory board that helped create a WGU Washington. He more than once has gone to bat for us, um, speaking nationally and within the state about the competency-based model and the power of online learning. So Sam, if you would come join me here for a minute. Thank you. Thank you. We, we thank you for your tireless support and advocacy for providing accessible, affordable, flexible, high quality online learning and for being such a valued colleague and friend. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Can I give you a Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Actually, he doesn't know this, but his wife joined him this evening. And Pat, I know you two are an amazing team that have done so much for higher education in the state. And if you could please stand so we could recognize you, I would appreciate it. There's Pat. Thanks, Pat. We are simply thrilled to have the Honorable Cyrus Habib as this evening's commencement speaker. I must say, graduates, you're in for a real treat. I've known Cyrus for several years, and I'm always filled with awe and wonder when I hear him speak. At just 31 years old, Cyrus has mastered skills to bypass his blindness and build an amazing life that knows no boundaries. At the age of eight, he completely lost his eyesight to cancer, but nonetheless went on to become a black belt in karate, a jazz pianist, a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford, an editor of the Law Review at Yale, a patent attorney at the prestigious Seattle-based firm Perkins Coie, where he works on licensing and technology for startup IT companies. Last year, he was elected to represent Bellevue's 48th district and even as a freshman legislator, Cyrus's star continues to rise. Named vice chair of the Technology and Economic Development Committee, he has worked tirelessly for bipartisanship in stimulating economic growth. I have enjoyed Cyrus's friendship, his gentle humor, his amazing goodwill, his ability to work collaboratively and find common ground with people of all persuasions and his hopefulness and his immense optimism. Please welcome your 2013 commencement speaker, the Honorable Cyrus Habib. Thank you. <laughs> Chancellor Floten, Dr. Smith, mentors and faculty members, friends and family, and of course, graduates. Thank you so much for inviting me to join you today for your commencement ceremony. It's a true honor. And I wanna thank you in particular, not only for giving me the chance to stand up here on the stage of the beautiful and historic Ben Arroyo Hall, but also for inviting me to play the piano, something I haven't had a chance to do regularly for, for many, many years, and which goes to show that um, in some areas, at least, you can still fake it till you make it. Uh, so it's an honor to be playing um, the Steinway piano today as well. But before I do that, I want to just share a few thoughts um, and, and observations that I have about Western Governors University in my own life and how I think in some ways we have much in common. Um, as Chancellor Floten mentioned, um, 
I lost my eyesight at a young age, but my American story starts even earlier than that. My parents came to the United States from Iran um, when that country had a very, very different political, cultural, and religious complexion than it does now. They came here, as so many Americans do, in search of religious freedom, in search of political uh, uh, freedom and liberties, in search of economic opportunities, and above all, for access to our wonderful educational institutions, of which WGU Washington is one of the most recent contributions. My father went to the University of Washington, my mother to the University of Maryland, where she got her law degree. I was born in Maryland, and soon after my birth, I was diagnosed in my left eye with a rare form of childhood cancer called retinoblastoma, which is about as scary as it sounds. I lost eyesight in my left eye very, very young, and despite the best efforts of the physicians and uh, professors at Johns Hopkins University, I ended up losing eyesight in my right eye, making me completely blind at the age of eight. Now, that was in the 1980s, which means that according to all my visual memories, everyone in this room still looks like Cyndi Lauper and Boy George. <laughs> so, at that time, we, we moved uh, in search of um, uh, a great quality of life that this state offers. My parents moved back to the Seattle area, and I grew up in Bellevue, which I have the honor of representing in the state legislature, along with my colleague, Representative Maxwell, who's here today. But as I think about all of the things that Chancellor Floten so generously mentioned in the arc of my life and how I ended up standing before you, and I think about WGU, three things come to mind in particular as common lessons that we share. The first, first of those is get up on the monkey bars. And what do I mean by that? Well, let me tell you a story, and Chancellor Floten's heard me tell this one before, but I'm gonna repeat it now because this is at the kernel of my life, the reason why, despite losing my eyesight, I was able to move courageously forward in life. And it's because soon after moving to Washington State, I was a third grader, I was in the third grade at Somerset Elementary School, and as you all know, kids like to go out at recess time and lunch time and play on the jungle gym up on the monkey bars, even here in rainy Seattle. So my school was no exception, and so all the kids would go out and play on the jungle gym, play on the monkey bars. And uh, I think knowing that my mother is a lawyer uh, and that I had recently become blind, the school was not too excited about my joining them. <laughs> and they had good lawyers there at the Bellevue School District. But what they did was they kept me by the side of the school with the recess monitors while all the other kids were playing during recess. And anyone who knows anything about moving across the country 3,000 miles away from your old friends or about having cancer and being um, in, uh, in a hospital bed when other kids are at a Halloween party um, or anything about being different and having a disability knows how isolating each of those experiences is. And so this was the final straw for me. I went home and I told my parents what had happened that day at school. And my parents were as frustrated as I was. And my mother took me with her to the school to learn how to become an advocate for myself. She took me to the school and she went to the school principal and she said, I'm gonna take my son to the school on the weekends and I'm gonna teach him how to get around the monkey bars. I'm gonna teach him how to get around the jungle gym. And he's gonna learn it as well as any other kid. She said, you know, it may happen that he may slip and fall and he may even slip and fall and break his arm. That's a fear that any mother has. But then she said, I can fix a broken arm, I can never fix a broken spirit. That became my life philosophy. So that whether it was learning martial arts or how to downhill ski, or learning my way around the New York Metro when I went to college in Manhattan, or learning to move to Guatemala on my own to study Spanish or to even become a photographer, I learned never to let someone hold me back from the monkey bars. And what's important about that is when my parents realized that I was gonna lose my eyesight, they made a pact to one another, which I only found out about recently. The pact they made to each other was, we will never let our fear become his fear. So what's important is, in life, 
that taught me we have to embrace risk. Of course, we all may slip and fall and break an arm. Every one of the clients I work with at my law firm, when they go out and start a new business, they may fail. They do that knowing they may fail, but yet they get up on the monkey bars and they take that risk. Each of you who are now taking your undergraduate and graduate degrees out into this workforce, out into this economy which is so uncertain, each of you faces those risks. And the important thing to remember always, which I've carried with me since that day on the playground, is that though we do, we do experience risk and there's always the, the, the possibility that we may slip and fall and break our arm, we're gonna get back up with our spirits intact. That was the first lesson I learned. And I think WGU uniquely positioned and has positioned each of you to go out there and get up on the monkey bars and take those risks. And I'm so excited for you. The second shared lesson is the lesson of the ant and the peacock. The ant and the peacock. Why would I mention these two creatures in particular. Well, this is where I, I'm going to take the privilege because I know you're all fresh from studying your, your undergraduate and graduate studies to get into a little bit of evolutionary biology. I know you weren't expecting this today on a beautiful Saturday afternoon. But the ant and the peacock are two creatures that have long confounded evolutionary biologists and, in fact, confounded Darwin himself. Why? Because the peacock defies natural selection in one important way. The more colorful the feathers of the peacock are, the more vulnerable he is to prey. Yet, somehow, the more colorful the feathers of the peacock are, the more attractive he is to a mate. And they've not been able to understand that because natural selection would suggest camouflage. The ant has confounded evolutionary biologists because Evolutionary biologists say that, above all, you're supposed to look out for yourself. Altruism doesn't make sense to an evolutionary biologist, the idea that you would work for the good of the whole. Well, what's important about my life and about the work that you're, you all are doing, what can we learn from the peacock and the ant? Well, it turns out that there's a solution to these two problems. The solution to these two problems was discovered and written about recently, about 10 years ago. The solution to the peacock is, that there is actually in nature a preference for creatures who overcome difficult obstacles. And then in fact, if you can show and demonstrate strength in the face of adversity, you actually have shown a survival instinct far more powerful than is otherwise found in nature. So, in my life, for example, having experienced something as debilitating as blindness at a young age, when I decided to run for office, there were many, many, many people, including in the, my own political party, including friends and advisors, who said, you know, Cyrus, how are you ever gonna do this? How are you ever gonna go around and doorbell and meet voters? Because we go around and you knock on people's doors and interrupt their dinners and they're watching TV or whatever it is, and that's how we introduce ourselves. And they said, how are you gonna do that, Cyrus? How are you gonna do it if you're blind? And so we said, well, uh, you know, I, I, I said, you know, I've, I've lived in New York, I've taken the metro subway on my own, I've taken, uh, you know, I've lived in Guatemala on my own, why do you think this is going to be such an obstacle? And they said, well, but we've never seen someone do it before. Well, I went out and I did it, and we found creative ways to get it done, but ultimately what people told me later was, we remembered you because you're never going to forget the blind guy who shows up at your doorstep, <laughs> right? So that's how you make a perceived weakness into a strength. And I know from the stories I've heard, some of the graduates here, that you all know that story as well, if not better than I do. You know, we, we just heard about the diversity in this group. Again, it's that diversity, that difference that you can make into a strength. What can we learn from the ant? Well, what we can learn from the ant is best summed up in a sign that if you drive down I-5 towards Vancouver, Washington, you'll see this sign. I think this is brilliant. It says, you're not stuck in traffic. You are traffic. <laughs> Think about that for a second. Our responsibilities are shared as a colony. We are all, in that sense, we have much to learn from each other. And so, as each of you leaves today, you know that you didn't achieve this phenomenal uh, d graduation, this commencement day on your own. Uh, I, I often say to, to people, when I explain my political philosophy, I always say, 
the easiest thing in the world for me would be to say, you know what, I did it on my own. I pulled myself up by my own bootstraps, and if I can do it, anyone can do it. And, you know, think about, uh, think about how proud of myself I would feel, how good about myself I would feel if I could say that it was all done on my own. The only problem is, I know that's not true. I know that I learned how to read books, borrowing Braille books and talking audio books from the Washington Talking Book and Braille Library, staying up way, way past my bedtime. Um, I learned how to use a cane, which, by the way, in my campaign photos, people thought was me wearing sunglasses holding a golf club. <laughs> uh, I learned how to use that cane to get around from the Department of Services for the Blind. Okay, I learned how to use computer software that reads me my emails and Facebook and Twitter. I learned that from the Washington State School for the Blind down in Vancouver. So I understand that everything I've done in my life has been on the backs of the work of other people. And I think you all know that as well, which is why it's so wonderful to have an institution like this for the next generation. And I challenge you, once you leave with your graduate and undergraduate degrees in hand, every year you think about this, which is that for those of you getting an undergraduate degree, you're in the one third of adults in this country who have a college degree, only one third. This despite the fact that by the end of this decade, 70% of our jobs will require one. So now you have a responsibility to think like an ant. You have a responsibility to realize that there's such a thing as indirect fitness, not just direct fitness, and to look out for society as a whole and help those other two thirds to achieve their dreams as well. And for those of you getting a graduate degree, you're part of the 6% of this country who has a graduate degree. So each of you are leaders in a scholastic community and those who have the opportunity to help others if you think like an ant and also think like a peacock. So the third final thing I wanna leave with you is that you know when you lose your eyesight at a young age, you learn the importance of two things more than any others. The importance of hard work and creative solutions. Okay? I mean, whether it's for me, whether it's figuring out which tie goes with which suit, whether it's figuring out how to tell a $5 bill from a $10 bill, or how to get to work every day, all of those require hard work and creativity. No institution of higher education in the state of Washington instills those values more than WGU. We have a history of higher education in the West that goes back a millennium. And that system of higher education has changed from monastic tutorials to lecture halls to land-grant universities. And this is the latest chapter. WGU, it's no surprise, was founded by Western governors because we are pioneers out here as we think about what the 21st century is gonna look like. And you all, you're not guinea pigs, you're leaders. As we think about how to work hard and think creatively to keep the cost of education low so it's accessible to everyone, to keep the quality, quality of education high as we test for competence, not just ticking off minutes on a clock. And as we work together to imagine a 21st century America where every person has access to higher education. And so we're gonna need your hard work and creativity as we do that for others in Washington State. So on behalf of all my colleagues in the state legislature, I want you to know how proud of you we are, how much we think about you down in Olympia, how much we see you as a beacon of hope in these very, very difficult times when it seems like how are we gonna achieve so much with so little, with such shrinking budgets and growing needs. We think of WGU Washington as a model we wanna replicate, we wanna grow, and please be available for us. We're gonna call on you and ask you for your thoughts and feedback and leadership as we try to roll that out more. Thank you for the tremendous honor of being here with you today and congratulations. In a word, amazing. Um, didn't he give you an incredible send-off, graduates?
I want to see you out there swinging on the monkey bars to think like an ant and uh, like a peacock. And I already know you've demonstrated your ability to work hard and find creative solutions. Um, Cyrus, we're very, very proud of you. This is a man to watch. He has an incredible future, and he's recognized that same in you, our graduates. Well, we're now ready to hear from your classmates. No one can speak more passionately about what your degrees mean to you graduates than the people that are representing you as, as your speakers this afternoon. We will have the privilege of hearing from three. First is Kathy Johnson, who's from Newport, Washington, getting a Bachelor's of Art degree in special education. She will be followed by Julius, Julius, and forgive me, but I think it's Giron. Oh, Giron, I'm very sorry. Thank you, of Auburn, Washington, who's getting a Bachelor of Science in Business Management. And last is Connie Summers of Bothell, Washington, who's getting a Bachelor of Science in Human Resources Management. Kathy, it's yours. Thank you. It is truly wonderful to be here, and it is heartwarming to know I made it to graduation day because of the love and support of so many. My entire life, the path set before me has been long and beautiful, but no path, however lovely, is without its bumps and turns. My life has had plenty of both. I was blessed with three amazing children, and life was brilliantly simple for us until George, my oldest son, was diagnosed with a progressive <clears throat> neurological disease. He was just nine years old. Over time, George lost his sight. He developed uncontrollable seizures. He lost, slowly lost motor function and slid into a vegetative state. Over time, but like me, he enjoyed a loving network of support with the help of his family, especially his younger brother, Morgan, very supportive friends, and a school system that never gave up on him as his condition worsened, George lived an extraordinary life. At the age of 24, the unthinkable happened. George died unexpectedly. Surrounded by family and friends, we sang to him and prayed George into heaven. He had gone on courageously to a better place. But I was not as brave as George. I took his death hard. My grief was so profound, all I wanted to do was sit in a chair, George's favorite chair, and mourn the loss of my son. I missed several months of work and those closest to me began to worry. It was during this time that the unflinching support George leaned on during his life shifted toward me. My son Morgan, George's brother, called me every day. He encouraged me to leave the house, to live. Morgan even built me a garden, a place to go, a fret to start fresh, bury my sadness deep in the ground, and foster new seeds of hope and life. As the months trudged by, my family and friends never left my side. And a year after George's death, their support provided me the lift I needed to properly honor his memory. I knew George wouldn't have wanted me moping around forever. <clears throat> so I decided to enroll in WGU Washington. I could have studied anything but after working in the school system for almost 20 years, I knew, without a doubt, I wanted to be a teacher. I decided to study special education to do something I am passionate about and as a way to pay tribute to George. And my time at WGU Washington took me on a spiritual journey to learn to serve children 
and be their connection to hope and opportunity. I'm so grateful for that journey and the institution that made it possible. I chose WGU Washington because it's competency-based, accredited, and online. I live in a small town of Newport, about an hour north of Spokane, and the closest brick-and-mortar university. For me, and working adults from rural communities like me, a college education is not an option with the, without the online modality. And for me, I wouldn't have come as far as I have without my mentor, Thea Archer. Thea, I'm here today because of you. And I'm here today in the memory of my son, George, whose life shapes and inspires this path I take. I'm here because of my family and friends and their constant support. And I'm here because of my son, Morgan, whose endless faith, love, and encouragement gave me strength. I close with a quote from Louisa May Alcott. Far away there in the sunshine are my highest aspirations. I may, I may not reach them, but I can look and see their beauty, believe in them, and try to follow where they lead. Today, I've come a long way since that heartbreaking time after my son died. But like a dragon's lie that begins life at the bottom of a murky pond before making the arduous journey up the lily stalk to its new life, I too climbed out of the murky pond to new life. Now, I have wings to fly closer to the sunshine where I see the path to my highest aspirations clearly. Thank you. <clears throat> Ernest Hemingway once said, don't ask what the world needs. Ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Standing here today, I'm surrounded by a room full of people who looked inside themselves then set out to achieve their dreams to, as Papa put it, come alive. Congratulations, fellow Night Owls. We did it. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Julius Hiron, and I'm a graduate of WGU's Washington School of Business. Although we haven't met, I know a little bit about you. I know that as a group, you average, your average age is 39 years old. You hail from every corner of the state, and most of you had to balance your studies with careers and other real life responsibilities. You are mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, sons, daughters, who all had to say no to a barbecue, a party, miss a practice, skip out on a date, or not go out on a sunny day because you had to get that work done and turned into task stream. Am I right? <laughs> Much like you, some time back I set a mission for myself. That mission was to continue my education and reach my dream of a degree. Much like you, I realized that in this economy, college was not a luxury but a necessity. Much like you, I felt I had to choose between work, family, and going to school. And just like you, all that changed when I discovered WGU Washington. In WGU Washington, I found a school that was suited for people just like you and me. We wanted to get a degree that was relevant to our careers from a university with a flexible model and affordable tuition. Graduating wasn't easy but we got the support and direction needed to be here where we are today. Now, I'd like to share a little bit about myself. My parents immigrated from El Salvador over 40 years ago with the dream of a better life. My father started college here, but after starting a family, he was forced to quit school and join the workforce. Growing up, both my parents demonstrated an incredible work ethic, but without college educations, 
they were forced to work all kinds of menial jobs just to try to make ends meet. The idea of higher education wasn't something that was promoted much in my family. So after graduating from high school, college wasn't part of my plan. Instead, I wanted to be a writer. I traveled to Europe to follow in the footsteps of Ernest Hemingway. I was just a young man when I touched down in Sweden. I bought a Volvo, and with miles of highway ahead of me, I dreamt of Spain, of San Sebastian, and the Bay of Biscay. Well, I made it as far as Switzerland. <laughs> like Hemingway, I was a hopeless romantic, and it was romance that kept me high in those Alps. I formed wonderful relationships with people who encouraged me to learn and grow. I befriended a university professor and soon discovered the value of higher education. And while I was in Switzerland, I took the time to look inside myself and ask what would make me come alive. Oh, and after a year, I ran out of money. So I left Europe, and like Hemingway, I returned to the States. It was at that time I enrolled in community college and earned an associate's degree. At that point, I left the country again. I moved to Central America to care for my sick grandmother. I began working for a US company. I found I had, I had a natural ability to motivate and manage people. I rose quickly in the company. However, I soon hit a ceiling. I wasn't able to advance to that job I really wanted because I didn't have a bachelor's degree. After my grandmother passed away, I once again decided to move back to the US. It was the best thing I've ever done. I met my wife shortly after I returned. My wife is a talented woman. She just received her master's while also balancing a full-time job and a home. Her example was a source of inspiration for me to remove my self-doubt, return to school, and get that bachelor's. So today, I stand before you like 42% of WGU graduates, a first-generation college graduate who can proudly add to his resume Bachelor of Science Business Management. I will also soon be a first-time father. I now have the credibility to instill in my daughter the importance of a good education. And now, just like you, I have the ability to provide a better life for my family. For this, I thank you, WGU, and I thank Virginia Wallace, my mentor, for her support and her encouragement in this journey. I'm still a romantic, but no longer hopeless. I'm proof that you ought to dream and ask what makes you come alive and go do it. Because what this world needs is more people that have come alive. Thank you, John. Good afternoon. You're supposed to say good afternoon back. <laughs> and no, I didn't get a teaching degree. When all of us complete a degree, most of us, and all of us have mentors, but most of us get a note or a call from our mentors asking that we tell our story, because we all have stories. And so one of the first things that I said to my, my mentor, Bob Rinquist, who after several years has also become my friend, is the paraphrase of a scripture. The race is not given to the swift, but to the one who endures to the end. My picture should be inserted right next to that scripture. My journey has been a pretty long one with WGU. I'm a super, super, super senior. I began in 2007, about a year and a half after I had lost my 22-year-old daughter, Elizabeth, to a very long illness. I had always planned to go back to school, but I delayed it so that I could be fully available as a working single mom to my children, to my two children, Charles and Elizabeth. Part of my healing was to go back to school and fulfill my commitment to achieving a degree and at that time, it seemed like a very straightforward plan. My life since that point has been a strange conglomeration of twists and turns and ups and downs and zigzags. So while my son and I were trying to reorient ourselves as a family, I got married, I relocated my home, 
suffered multiple losses in the family and circle of friends. I received a job promotion, which was good, but the job was absolutely insane and ridiculous. I experienced some health issues, hospitalizations, family complications, and then I lost, and some of you can relate to this who are dog owners, I lost my dog of 13 years. Life happens, and life indeed happened for me. So the straightforward plan that I had starting out was fleeting. I had difficulty completing classes at times, and I seriously questioned the sanity of the path that I had taken. I remember thinking that I was perhaps just too old to do this stuff anymore. I distinctly remember sitting and yelling at my laptop, are you kidding? Are you serious? This cannot be real. I was close to graduation last year. My son was encouraging me and excited to attend commencement, and then several things went wrong. I remember telling Bob, my mentor, that if I didn't complete that year, then I didn't care if I completed at all. I was so tired. Well, a couple of pretty important people got me through that patch. What helped me finish my degree were my faith, my mentor, Bob, and my son, Charles, who is a lot more of an inspiration than he knows. I didn't have to have a degree to succeed in business because I was already succeeding. But this was a commitment that I had made to myself, to my daughter, and to my son, who was cheering me on even when I was sitting there yelling at my laptop. And then there was Bob. Bob is a great balance of calm with the right amount of pushiness. He pushed me in a way that was perfectly suited to where I was physically and mentally. He was compassionate and talked me through the, the, the why of what I was doing, keeping my dream in the forefront. And as a good mentor would do, he provided advice, counsel, and coaching that helped me develop solutions to the challenges I was facing. I'd be remiss if I didn't call out the fact that I absolutely trust WGU. I trusted the curriculum and that when I passed the course, I had a solid understanding of the material. The course mentors and the learning communities were invaluable. And when I completed my capstone, I was so proud. I could look at this piece of work and truly see the culmination of all my studies. I've learned through this that I am more than viable and a little bit brilliant. My son is proud, and I know that my daughter would be proud too. I'm so proud of my degree and what I've learned in the last few years about what I can do in the face of many difficult things. A long time ago when my children were very young, I taught them that each of us is more than the circumstances of our lives, and we don't have to be bound by the difficulties thrown our way. And now, I have more proof of that when I look at the joy and the pride in my son's face and that gorgeous diploma hanging on my wall. Thank you. Kathy, Julius, and Connie, weren't they wonderful? Uh, thanks. Let's thank them again. <clears throat> Just as a personal note, um, hearing your stories is what nourishes my soul. When I look out at all of you, I know that behind each of the eyes that are staring up here, is an individual story of courage, persistence, dedication. And, um, you know, mid-career to make the decision to go back to school, as I indicated, was a real act of courage. We may have provided you uh, the opportunity, but you seized it. 
And I'm very proud um, that the mentors were mentioned as having a huge role in your success. And we at WGU, our, your success is our dedication, and we're very, very proud of what you've accomplished. So now, graduates, I want to turn the program to the moment that maybe you've all been waiting for. It is my honor to commence with the conferral of your degrees. Is anybody happy to hear this? I'd like to start with the master degree candidates, and would all of you please stand? Wow. <laughs> Upon the favorable recommendation of our faculty and the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees and member governors of Western Governors University, I hereby confer upon you the master's degree you have earned to include the Master of Arts, Master of Arts in Teaching, Master of Business Administration, Master of Education, or Master of Science with all the rights and privileges thereto appertaining. Congratulations to our master's candidates for your degrees. We're going to call you up row at a time, so would all but the first row be seated, and the marshals will come up to get you. Um, you're going to receive your degrees, and you will be hooded individually. Our master's graduates will receive a hood bearing the color of their discipline, and performing the hooding today will be WGU Provost Dr. David Leisure. Michelle Chalcraft. Master of Science, Curriculum and Instruction, Bonnie Lake, Washington. Carly Virick, Master of Education, Learning and Technology, Bothell, Washington. Flora Dan Onhel, Master of Education, Learning and Technology, Fairwood, Washington. Hortensia West, Master of Education, Instructional Design, Kingston, Washington. Michaela Paulson, Master of Education, Instructional Design, Renton, Washington. Krista Boche, Master of Arts in Teaching, Social Science, Shelton, Washington. <laughs> Hannah Burleson, Master of Arts in Teaching, Science Education, Longview, Washington. Aaron Tidwell. Master of Arts in Teaching, Elementary Education, Redmond, Washington. Rachel Martin, Master of Arts in Teaching, Elementary Education, Woodenville, Washington. Laura Merrick, Master of Arts in Teaching, Elementary Education, Renton, Washington. Joshua Kramer, Master of Arts, Science Education, Yakima, Washington. Aaron Roman, Master of Arts, Mathematics Education, Olympia, Washington. Deidre Snell. Master of Arts, Mathematics, Education, Ellensburg, Washington. Okay. 
Lacey Haupt, Master of Arts, Mathematics Education, Bellevue, Washington. Rebecca DeBoer, Master of Arts, Mathematics Education, Yakima, Washington. Amanda Brandt, Master of Arts, Mathematics Education, Everett, Washington. Mindy Kelly, Master of Arts in Teaching, Social Science, Winlock, Washington. Stacy Huntimer, Master of Science, Special Education, Sela, Washington. Cassilia Miller, Master of Science, Curriculum and Instruction, Ellensburg, Washington. Jessica Lockwood, Master of Science, Curriculum and Instruction, Sandpoint, Idaho. Leela Hippie, Master of Science, Curriculum and Instruction, Lake Stevens, Washington. Aaron Conklin, Master of Science, Curriculum and Instruction, Ellensburg, Washington. Amy Anderson, Master of Business Administration, Seattle, Washington. Barbara Ashley, Master of Business Administration, Puyallup, Washington. Josh Gibson, Master of Business Administration, Monroe, Washington. Jamika Hilliard, Master of Business Administration, Lakewood, Washington. Emily Hoyle, Master of Business Administration, Spanaway, Washington. Jason Johnson, Master of Business Administration, Bellingham, Washington. <laughs> Kathleen Kammerer, Master of Business Administration, Pullman, Washington. <laughs> David Kinney, Master of Business Administration, Everett, Washington. Robin Marr, Master of Business Administration, Seattle, Washington. Sarah Mayhew, Master of Business Administration, Tumwater, Washington. Kaylil Nakano, Master of Business Administration, Ferndale, Washington. Ken Penrose, Master of Business Administration, Puyallup, Washington. Lisa Pfeiffer Ross. Master of Business Administration, Vancouver, Washington. Robert Taylor, Master of Business Administration, Ferndale, Washington. Crystal Amber Echo Wagner, Master of Business Administration, Moses Lake, 
Washington. Jennifer McQuillan, Master of Business Administration, San Diego, California. Ian Berkheimer, Master of Business Administration, Information Technology Management, Federal Way, Washington. Donald LePage, Master of Business Administration, Information Technology Management, Spanaway, Washington. Renee Isbell, Master of Business Administration, Information Technology Management, Bellevue, Washington. Myrna Dawn Pear, Master of Business Administration, Informational Te Information Technology Management, Edmonds, Washington. Mary M. Zwirling, Bachelor of Science, Health Informatics, Seattle, Washington. Vicki Wagner, Master of Science, Nursing, Lake Taps, Washington. Diane Pitchford, Master of Science, Nursing, Silverdale, Washington. Christy McMahill, Master of Science, Nursing, Spanaway, Washington. Ann McGavran, Master of Science, Nursing, North Bend, Washington. Sam Butikofer, Master of Science, Nursing, Seattle, Washington. Carol Torpy, Master of Business Administration, Healthcare Management, Spokane, Washington. Linda Shinman, Master of Business Administration, Healthcare Management, Mount Vernon, Washington. Susan Reynolds, Master of Business Administration, Healthcare Management, Tumwater, Washington. Elizabeth Means, Master of Business Administration, Healthcare Management, Kirkland, Washington. Roger Jap, Master of Business Administration, Healthcare Management, Seattle, Washington. Teresa Hansen, Master of Business Administration, Healthcare Management, Des Moines, Washington. Emily Duval, Master of Business Administration, Healthcare Management, Richland, Washington. Teresa Coleman, Master of Business Administration, Healthcare Management, Washougal, Washington. Gazahine Ababa, 
Master of Business Administration, Healthcare Management, Shoreline, Washington. Paul Cardelli, Master of Science, Information Security and Assurance, Kennewick, Washington. Sean Malone, Master of Science, Information Security and Assurance, Linwood, Washington. Peter Paul, Master of Science, Information Security and Assurance, Eatonville, Washington. Samuel Shelton, Master of Science, Information, Information Security and Assurance, Spanaway, Washington. Ariel Silverstone, Master of Science, Information Security and Assurance, Bellevue, Washington. Carl Tyndall, Master of Science, Information Security and Assurance, Lacey, Washington. Would the candidates for bachelor degrees please rise? <laughs> Upon the favorable recommendation of our faculty and the authority invested in me by the Board of Trustees and the member governors of Western Governors University, I hereby confer upon you the bachelor's degree or endorsement you have earned to include Bachelor of Arts, the Bachelor of Science, or the post-baccalaureate and teacher preparation endorsement programs with all the rights and privileges therefore appertaining. So we're going to start with the first row. So would the first row stay standing and the rest of you sit down and uh, we'll come back here in a minute. Karen Feliciano. Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Seattle, Washington. Erlene Cox, Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Tacoma, Washington. Linda Baston, Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Graham, Washington. Odessa Bacon, Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Puyallup, Washington. Aaron Larson, Bachelor of Arts Science, Federal Way, Washington. Aileen Paniker, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics Education, Federal Way, Washington. Mike Johnson, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics Education, Spokane Valley, Washington. William Bruce, Bachelor of Arts, Mathematics Education, Port Orchard, Washington. Peggy Russell, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies, Bonnie Lake, Washington. Tamara Bernstein, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies, Des Moines, Washington. Cheryl Thompson, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies, Enumclaw, Washington. 
Michelle Plum, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies, Kelso, Washington. Elion, Elion, Eliana Nicholas, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies, Gib, Gig Harbor, Washington. <laughs> Alban Matson, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies, Puyallup, Washington. <laughs> Carolyn Lefebvre, Lefebvre. Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies, Arlington, Washington. <laughs> Melissa Cruz, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies, Port Orchard, Washington. <laughs> Carrie Findlay, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies, Malaga, Washington. Carmi Kraus, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies, Vancouver, Washington. <laughs> Elizabeth Bogue, Bachelor of Arts, Interdisciplinary Studies, Puyallup, Washington. <laughs> Sasheen Adams, Bachelor of Arts, Inter Interdisciplinary Studies, Roy, Washington. <laughs> Tara Rink. Bachelor of Arts, Special Education, Montlake Terrace, Washington. <laughs> Angela McIntosh, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education, Vancouver, Washington. <laughs> Tanya Michelle Latham, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education, Spanaway, Washington. Tanya Kennedy, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education, Seattle, Washington. <laughs> Megan Goodwin, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education, East Wenatchee, Washington. <laughs> Stephanie Christensen, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education, Kennewick, Washington. <laughs> Jessica McBride, Bachelor of Arts, Science, Paulsbo, Washington. <laughs> Lashana Campbell, Bachelor of Science, Accounting, Lacey, Washington. Robin Gibbs, Bachelor of Science, Accounting, McCleary, Washington. Andrea Hahn, Bachelor of Science, Accounting, Vancouver, Washington. Michelle Jatterland, Bachelor of Science, Accounting, Efreda, Washington. Richard Melvin, Bachelor of Science, Accounting, Buckley, Washington. Sarah Salter, Bachelor of Science, Accounting, Bremerton, Washington. Michelle Simpson, Bachelor of Science, Accounting, West Richland, Washington. Sarah Weems, Bachelor of Science, Accounting, Mount Vernon, Washington. <laughs> Kelly Algier, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Lakewood, Washington. Christine Carmona, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, La Center, Washington. Amanda Crowley, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Liberty Lake, Washington. Deanna DeVries Herlocker, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Vancouver, Washington. Deanne Wagoner, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Spokane, Washington. <laughs> Gerald Germain, 
Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Ording, Washington. Scott Goodman, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Renton, Washington. Kevin Griffin, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Maple Valley, Washington. David Hall, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Vancouver, Washington. Richard Height, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Renton, Washington. Joshua Hendershot, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Puyallup, Washington. Mary Hill, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Tacoma, Washington. Kimberly Jones, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Bothell, Washington. Anna Mayer, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Squim, Washington. Samantha Martinez, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Tacoma, Washington. Deanne McClung, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Shelton, Washington. Johanna Millett, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Seattle, Washington. Maitali Gorbachev, Gorbachev, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Linwood, Washington. Kristen Nutt, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Puyallup, Washington. Janelle Roper, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Rochester, Washington. Barbara Rousseau Osborne, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Shoreline, Washington. Denise Sackner, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Everett, Washington. Jennifer Thomas, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Auburn, Washington. Mallory Turner, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Stanwood, Washington. David Volley, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Vancouver, Washington. Travis Warren, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Lake Stevens, Washington. Heather Atwood, Bachelor of Science, Human Resources Management, Tacoma, Washington. Ed Brands, Bachelor of Science, Human Resources Management, Vancouver, Washington. Munia Jatar, Bachelor of Science, Human Resources Management, Snoqualmie, Washington. KC Lee, Bachelor of Science, Human Resources Management, Port Orchard, Washington. Brian Mitchell, Bachelor of Science, Human Resources Management, South Colby, Washington. Kenna Gordon, Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Puyallup, Washington. Mary Goff, Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Auburn, Washington. Kimberly Fitzgerald, Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Pullman, Washington. James Alley, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology Management, Shoreline, Washington. Beverly Baker Brooks, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology Management, Federal Way, Washington. Christy Kim, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology Management, Mukilteo, Washington. John Lasky, 
Bachelor of Science, Information Technology Management, University Place, Washington. Stephen Pavogel, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology Management, Aberdeen, Washington. James Graber, Information Technology Management, Ellensburg, Washington. Ryan Love, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology Management, Seattle, Washington. Jacqueline Staley, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology Management, Yakima, Washington. Jessica Hull, Bachelor of Science, Marketing Management, Linwood, Washington. David Jensen, Bachelor of Science, Marketing Management, Gig Harbor, Washington. Patrick Smith, Bachelor of Science, Marketing Management, Gig Harbor, Washington. Nora Tiffany, Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Spokane Valley, Washington. Molly Sharp, Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Edmonds, Washington. Ginny Serrano, Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Tacoma, Washington. Erica J. Snell, Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Dryden, Washington. Patrick Sanka Suwan, Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Seattle, Washington. Myra Ramos, Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Yakima, Washington. Tracy Papineau, Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Issaquah, Washington. Rachel Lane, Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Redmond, Washington. Esther Iwuna, Iwuona, Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Linwood, Washington. Alina Hanna, Bachelor of Science, Nursing, Mill Creek, Washington. Jedediah Barta, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology, Moses Lake, Washington. Jeremiah Hoyle, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology, Spanaway, Washington. Jeffrey Banning, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology, Kennewick, Washington. <laughs> Timothy Knuth, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology, Bothell, Washington. <laughs> Leona Martin Hall, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology, Gig Harbor, Washington. David Ohm, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology, Graham, Washington. Matthew Sargent, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology, Issaquah, Washington. David LaFranchi, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology, Granite Falls, Washington. Cody Miller, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology, Lincoln City, Oregon. Alex Strand, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology, Sammamish, Washington. Paul Weidert, Bachelor of Science, Information Technology, Kennewick, Washington. Connie Summers, Bachelor of Science, 
Human Resource Management, Bothell, Washington. <laughs> Julius Huron, Bachelor of Science, Business Management, Auburn, Washington. <laughs> Katherine Johnson, Bachelor of Arts, Special Education, Newport, Washington. Well, I think our graduates, I, well, first of all, I have to tell all the bachelor's candidates, it's now time to turn your tassels as a symbol of your graduation. Congratulations. very, very special treat for you now. Just one more send-off. Um, I'd like to introduce, as a closing tribute, our commencement speaker, the Honorable Cyrus Habib, in Benaroya Hall, will be playing Summertime for you from Porgy and Bess, and he will be accompanied by Miss Valerie Lopez.
graduates, one last send-off. I join the Honorable Cyrus Habib in asking you to go out and to use the credentials and degrees that you have been awarded this evening, not only for your own personal betterment, but that for your whole community. Um, you join the family of learned people in your community. <coughs> much has been given to you, but also much is expected from you. So we want you to go on and, and continue to learn for the entire rest of your life. And one last request from WGU is to join the alumni community to continue to be part of WGU, which is your alma mater. So with that, we're going to close the 2013 commencement ceremony. And will all of our guests please remain seated for the recessional until the very last of our fine WGU Washington graduates have exited. They'll be waiting for you just outside the doors, and there is a lovely reception following in the lobby. Well, thanks to one and all uh, for all of your contributions, to our special guests that are here this evening, the people in the stage party, our wonderful speaker and musicians. Thanks very much. Congratulations, graduates. Please stand for the recessional. <laughs>